Uh, so I'm going to pre present a case where I use the uh, curva fix for percutaneous superior ramus uh, fixation for a medial fracture with an anti-grade device. So the case is a 32-year-old female. She's been in a motor vehicle collision. She's polytraumatized. She has a splenic laceration. Uh, she has a, a left superior and inferior ramus fracture, a left posterior crescent fracture, uh, and then a posterior uh, cortical fracture of the right superior ramus. Uh, she's also morbidly, morbidly obese. Uh, and then she does have pain with internal rotation of bilateral hemipelvis. And so here's some imaging you can see on the right, 3D surface rendered images with inlet and outlet views. Uh, and you can see the superior ramus uh, there on the left side, uh, which is medial to the obturator foramen, uh, and then the posterior cortical buckle. And then you can see an outlet image. Uh, we see signs of sacral dysmorphism here uh, that you can see with the upsloping sacral ala, uh, mammillary bodies, uh, and the inability to get transsacral fixation at the upper sacral segment. And she was supine on an OSI flatbed. We had a central sacral bump for her. So we get our starting point with the standard views that we're all familiar with for the uh, anterior pelvis and superior ramus. We did obturator outlet imaging and inlet imaging. You can see our guide wire starting there. And then our entry reamer going in, creating a path where we're gonna be uh, outside of the acetabulum. We'd measured her preoperatively, uh, both at, but there are two constriction points within this corridor, one above the acetabulum and one above the obturator ring and both measured out to about nine millimeters. So we felt, especially with a curved implant, uh, we'd have an ability to get the 8.0 millimeter rod screw in. And here you can see it's heading anterior and would exit um, and would exit uh, out the anterior ring. Uh, so we proceed on, and then you can see us using the turn of the bend in the guide wire to accommodate that canal and enter the, met the metaphyseal bone of this medial superior ramus, which can be very difficult to get. You can see the bend in that wire on the inlet image and how anterior you would need to start. Sometimes to get a screw integrated into this bone, you may be in out in in the iliacus gutter, just lateral to the iliopectineal eminence. And so there you can see the wire seating uh, going into the metaphyseal bone, uh, and you can even get past the uh, cortex. Here you can see us uh, preparing to ream, uh, but then we proceed with the reamers. Here it is on an optrator outlet image. You can see the countersink going in. You can see the exchange tube uh, changing out to a non ball tip guide rod. And here you can see the rod being inserted or the rod screw being inserted past the acetabulum, past the obturator ring, and then docked there on an obturator outlet image. And you can see we have nice length and how the curve allows us to accommodate this corridor. And we tension it down. And there's a final inlet image final obturator outlet image. Here are filmed six weeks post-op with AP inlet outlet views. Uh, she was made weight bearing as tolerated with a walker uh, immediately after surgery, uh, had pain resolved by about three or four weeks and did well without any clinical events.